So the whole of uh, Harris is a stunning, stunning little island, but I can't recommend the southern part more. Uh, there's loads of little roads. They, they seem like someone's private driveway, but check it out on Google Maps and they go down to some uh, quite wonderful locations. And we've stopped off one now before I go out and face the wind. It's like a little, um, I don't know, little, little old port. A little harbour at the bottom of a very quiet little road. And it's, uh, yeah, it's quite nice. So we'll go outside and face the wind. And another rainbow. I'm getting bored of rainbows. <laughs> So we're heading our way back to Luskentire Beach. Uh, we've done, I would say, Harris and Lewis now. Um, it's a fantastic time. Now, if you're gonna come over here and you're not into photography, I recommend at most, you'll need two to three days um, exploring. If you're into photography like us, then a week will <laughs> suffice. But definitely the southern part is uh, the most photogenic and I don't know, beautiful, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So, there you go. So what you just saw there was the um, other side of Luskentire Beach and this massive sandbank that must be constantly changing. Must be due to the, uh, the way the tide's carrying the sand in. There you go, so we're heading back to Luscan Tyre and we'll see you there. So you can see where we're uh, staying tonight. Luscan Tire Beach is just down this road, probably about a mile. And this is one of those park ups similar to the one that we stayed at when we first got to Luscan Tire Beach, where you can uh, pay or donate five pound through PayPal and use that park up. Uh, everyone we spoke to so far said they can't get a signal here, <laughs> so, they, so they can't, uh, so they can't pay. But yeah, this gives us a great starting point for tomorrow. Well, good morning folks. I don't know how we do it, but we just managed to do it. Scotland in autumn should not be like this. Yes, it's fresh. We've been caught out a number of times in a small flurry of rain, 
but nothing significant. And you wake up and you get this. Again, stunning. Slept well last night, slept just down the road. You'd have seen that. Because this beach goes for miles and bends around the corner into that big sand bay. Oh, what a lovely area. And the sun is just over there and it may come out. Who knows? So we did get up early this morning. We was uh, up and about by six, which isn't too bad. And the sky is just colours, rain, sun, pinks, a lot of greys. <laughs> and we're getting some lovely uh, photos this morning. And please feel free to run past me while I'm recording. <laughs> Hi folks, morning. I'm struggling There's to talk. rainbow in the cloud. Well, I'm fed up with rainbows to be fair. Oh, there is a rainbow in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to be full-time photographers. I love landscape photography, Claire. And myself do do weddings and uh, portraits and alike. But my heart's in landscape. So is Claire's to be fair. She does love a wedding or two, let me tell you that though. <laughs> this is Luscan Tire Beach. So here's um, one thing to be aware of if you do come over to Harrison Lewis. Uh, there are a few campsites dotted around, but most seem not to have electricity, and some even don't have uh, showers, so it's literally just a pitch. It's quite strange, so we're actually on a campsite now, the toilet's open, that's why we've come onto this. But um, it is just pitches, nothing else. Why you'd stay on here and not wild camp. So yeah, be ready for that guys, especially if you're in your uh, VWs and you've got no facilities on board. Don't book onto a campsite because you're uh, without having a good look at what they provide facilities wise. How are they? Really nice and clean. Were they? Yeah. So they're in ISO containers. They, they look really? awful from the outside, but actually inside they're nice and they're clean and they've got hot water. Oh, good. Here for some toasties, a little bit of a breakfast. Not bad, you got an itch. Not a bad spot. 
And over in the background over there is the Isle of Skye. Cheese toasters are the way ahead. What a view. the sky and occurring. Sometimes I miss my voice in the depth of hunger. So we've arrived at Ellen Glass Lighthouse. So it's on the uh, it's a little bit north of Tarbot and we've got some time to kill for today where we're gonna head back to Skye tomorrow. If you look in the distance there, you can see the curring. So we thought we'd come down here, take a few pictures and come for a little bit of a hike. So from the car park, it's uh, two clicks following the old like military road and footpath. But you can do a longer walk all the way back along the uh, side of the cliff edge there, which uh, Claire's gonna race me going that way back to the van she thinks she can get there quicker than me so we'll see what happens there she knows she knows she ain't got no chance so we'll take a little walk around the uh, lighthouse we're going to see how close we can get to it so the walk was very very easy so you find the uh, car park and then just follow the path all the way up. It is a road and there is some 4x4s parked a lot closer than we have. Probably about half a K walk to the lighthouse from where they've parked. But we need to get out and burn some calories. I've eaten too many toffees. <laughs> okay. In case you're wondering, Tony went the long way round and made it back to the van first. So we started our YouTube journey a few years back when he, we uh, first converted 
our old Hugo, the builder's van. And we realised very quickly that owning a van gave us the freedom to explore and go on adventures, but also opened up the world of uh, landscape photography to us. So that's what we've been concentrating on for the last few years, is getting better at taking pictures, understanding photography, so much so Claire's in the middle of her degree in photography. So we wish her well on that. So where we go in the future, I don't know. I think we'll continue to uh, go on adventures, but photography will always play a uh, key role in that. So I apologise if you get bored of lighthouses and beach scenes, but that's where our um, that's where our passion lies. Not in lighthouses, but in photography. Have you got a kinky lighthouse fetish? You didn't tell me about. I haven't got a kinky lighthouse. I think fetish. he has. I haven't. I think he has. Oh, look at that one. Oh. <laughs> So this is Island Glass uh, Lighthouse on Scarpe and um, this lighthouse was first lit in 1789 and I didn't just read any of that. <laughs> The huge fog signal was now decommissioned, but was in use for 80 years between 1907 and 1987. It's a shame in a way, but since being automated, most of these, uh, most of the lighthouses and the um, living accommodation are just left derelict. Look at that old boiler there. I mean there. <laughs> Did you point at me? <laughs> Located on the Hebridean island of Scalpe, Island Glass is one of the first four lighthouses built in Scotland and the first on the Hebrides. It was first established in 1789 by Thomas Smith and the present tower was erected in 1824. The light room was raised 25 feet and sits proudly 73 feet above the sea. The buildings surrounding the lighthouse are currently undergoing restoration and were originally built in the Greco-Egyptian style. The light was last upgraded in 2019 when LED optics replaced the sealed beam lamp.
If you are lucky, on arrival you will get to meet the sprightly 70-something couple who are the current caretakers of this unique set of buildings and who have some fabulous tales to tell about life here. That was a pleasant day. Up early at Luskan Tire Beach and then uh, onward to the lighthouse. I'm going to stay here tonight, the main road's only there, but it's uh, just a five minute drive down to Tarbet where we're going to catch the early crossing back to the Isle of Skye. So, um, yep, nothing else really to port there. It's a relatively flat spot in the middle of nowhere. Hey. Isle of Harris and Lewis, done.